Okay, we're here today to present my physical game wish list. This is sort of a companion piece to the last video. If you haven't seen the last video, put it up in the card right away so you can go straight to it. So yes, this is actually a uh, let's play slash list of games that I think uh, should get a widespread physical. When I say widespread physical, some of the games on this list actually did get a physical in some capacity, but they didn't exactly get a widespread one. They were either through super rare or limited run, as well as uh, uh, an odd East Asia sauce sprinkled in there. Yes, everything that you see has uh, never been widespread release for multiple people to an almost unlimited quantity to enjoy. In general, the ones that have the limited releases I will mention as I go along. Uh, speaking of limited releases, we first have the very first one. I know it's a bit redundant, but it's Abzu. By, uh, it's by 505 Games and somebody else. So let me preface this because there's a few things you need to know. Uh, the game itself is a little bit buggy, kind of rough on the edges rough around the edges I should say when I beat it like the, the ending cutscene crashed before I got to the end of it kind of ruined the immersion because it's pretty immersed it's pretty emotional and on top of that the game does tend to crash a little bitty bit so if that happens don't be surprised the game is not exactly feature complete this was actually a physical release from super rare games uh, this was one of their earlier uh, switch physicals and uh, yeah it kind of sucks that you can't buy it on on mass but uh, it doesn't exactly matter considering you know I, I could technically buy it but I have to buy it from a scalper and I don't want to do that so without further ado let's get into Abzu uh, yeah so basically i'm just uh praying that everything goes right so let's get this stuff started baby let's go see it's five five games in giant squid i could have said that when i got into the game truth be told no big deal uh yeah the audio based on what i'm looking at seems to be okay before we actually get into the real meat and potatoes uh itself let's uh let's check out meditation mode i didn't unlock very many meditation modes because uh i guess because i'm a lazy piece of crap but let's go to this one and if you see, uh, once it loads, because Switch games got loading times, especially uh, physicals. But uh, this one is not a physical, so it loads a little bit faster. Yeah, just, just a word of advice. If you speed run, you should probably play with a digital game, not a cartridge. Because some cartridges have significantly faster, uh, sorry, opposite, significantly slower loading times. You can use the analog stick to kind of view fishes in a little aquarium environment. Yep, uh, this is what you do. It's not the most polished, but it's it's pretty good for Switch, like, looks-wise. I mean, performance, it's a little bit iffy, but they definitely spent a lot of time on it. They just didn't polish it up, in my opinion. So let's just take a little bit of a moment just to enjoy it. I think that's enough of that. So let's, uh, let's freaking uh, go to a chapter and play. So let's start out with, uh, let's go with this chapter. Last time I started out with the second chapter of my first recording. So let's go with the third chapter. And it'll give you a general idea of what the game is about without really spoiling much, because I'm not going to go too deep into it. I'm not going to show you that much, because obviously it's an experience that you need to actually play yourself as opposed to watch somebody else play for too long. So I'll try to keep the spoilers out to a minimum. So yeah, as you can see, you can swim around. You can uh, go faster. You can do flips. You can signal to other uh, things. You can uh, mess with the camera. Like this. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, we're in a sort of autumn style underwater section. Some people don't like the swimming controls of this game. I think they're just fine. I, I think they work pretty well. Uh, compared to Journey, which I think is a bit too floaty, and uh, this is certainly a game to behold in comparison. Ooh, look at the graphisk. I wonder if I can discover a meditation area somewhere. Maybe unlock that for future viewing. I don't know. I wonder where it could be. I wonder if it's down below. Is that it right there? No, that's a that's a plot related thing. Oh, it's a little robot dude. 
Where could it be? It's gotta be here somewhere, right? It's a hidden hidden collectible. Where could it be? Oh, it must be over there. Here's that that's what I'm thinking. It has to be somewhere around here. It's gotta be that shark statue, if I'm being real. Yeah boy, let's freaking go. And look at this. What the fuck? A Nautilus? What the fuck are you doing there, bro? No, don't, 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 don't. Yeah, go over here instead. That's a uh, sunfish. Ooh. Spectacle. Golden Trevally. Or Trevally. I don't know how to say that. A silky shark as opposed to a uh, rough shark. Or coarse shark. These are kelp fish. Hmm, nice. Next up is Art of Balance. This is a Shinen multimedia game, which is one of two Shinen multimedia games on this list. Yeah, it's not exactly the most diverse list, truth be told, but these are ones that I particularly like and want to see physical in some capacity or a better capacity. So yeah, it's a Shinen multimedia game. Yeah, it's it was originally a Wii release, and uh, you could play it on Wii U, though. Although... I would think at one point you couldn't because they shut down the Wii store. It was a digital only release. So if you didn't get it by then, you know, you couldn't play it. So it was kind of compatible, kind of not. Otherwise, the only way you could play it now if it wasn't for the Switch release would be through emulation like the Dolphin emulator. This is kind of interesting because I do have a motion control compatible controller. So let's show that off. I'm going to turn on the motion control and look at that. Look at that. See, I'm actually controlling it with my controller. It's a little bit kind of delayed because of the uh, recording. I'm not gonna play that way, I just wanna show you. Look, I can do it. Let's turn that off and uh, let's let's play uh, let's play a sesh, bro. This was uh, this was quite the addictive game when I first got into it. Let's play it, let's play an arcade match and I'll show you what's up. I have indeed actually played many uh, clips on my channel of my successful attempts. So let's try to pick one and maybe I haven't exactly played a whole lot. I mean, obviously I beat the whole game, but let me see. How about this one? Let's try this one. Okay, so as you can see, you have these little blocks that you can rotate and place down. The goal of this one is to not let the uh, blocks spill into the water. And as you can see, I just did that. Let's try that again. So eventually, you know, you will succeed, it just takes a lot of effort. As you can also see, I'm not exactly doing the best job, truth be told. So let's see if I can get a little bit more balance. Oh, no, that failed again. Let's try one more time. Okay, that's, that's pretty center, I would say. Hmm. Okay, okay, that's a little bit off for my taste. Let's try to get it a little bit balanced. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Let's try to get it a little bit center right about here. Okay, that's good. And we should get it with this last little piece right here. Hey, look at that! Ba-boom, baby, let's go! So that's the general gist of the game. So that's that mode played. Let's play like one more mode. We're not gonna play all the modes. Let's play one more mode just to kind of let you uh, get the uh, sense of how it plays. This one is infinite mode and I like this one because you can go whatever pace you want and just you keep stacking until you lose. So yeah, um, the graphics are pretty nice. Like it's, it's hard to believe this is actually on the Wii. But I guess it makes sense considering it's not using that much polygons, you know, throughout the entire space. It's definitely like only a few objects. So they can make it appear like it's more graphically intense than it really is considering it's basically just an upscale of a, of a previously Wii compatible game which is basically just a souped up uh, GameCube anyway but that's that's already been talked about to death so let's let's see if how far we can get see now it's getting kind of tricky because uh, I'm starting to run out of room I can almost finagle it that'll do yeah there you go it's already uh it's already taken care of so that's cool if, see if we can do something like that again. That's nice. Okay. Oh man, this is getting really intense. That works. Okay. I think we can slot it into here. There we go, baby. Let's go. See, can I get it to be right here? Yes, I can. Man, I am killing it right now. 
It exploded. I'm kind of playing a tricky dicky game right now. Oh wow, that was really lucky. Ah! Oh, just as I said that, I freaking lost. Not bad for uh, for an improv attempt. Hey guys, next up is uh, Cattails. Before I get started, know that uh, I do own this game on PC. It's where I first played and beat it. I'm decently far in this game, although not as much, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, accomplished. In my first file, I definitely got a lot more done and did a lot more cool stuff. Driving and I'm speeding and I'm vigorously... This game is very good music-wise. It, it's very calming and soothing. My character's name is Nonio. It's kind of an inside joke that I, that I use in regards to uh, whenever I create a new character. It's a long story, I'm not gonna go into it. And plus it wouldn't make much sense, really, unless you were me. So uh, last time I was here, I decided to just show you my uh, my little, uh, little treasure trove of all these various animals and plants and whatnot. In the winter, you, you oftentimes have very, a very hard time trying to uh, find healing items. Let me just go to sleep. Uh, I'm not going to be saving this session, so this is just going to be a, a, what do you call it, an exhibition, if you will. And uh, I, do I have plants? Do I have a nursery yet? Uh, no, I, I do not. I, I don't have anything... I don't have anything in the plant box to help me out in this case. Seems like I have everything upgraded, but I don't exactly have any uh, flowers to uh, farm. That kind of sucks. Oh, she gave me a spare mouse. That's cool. So let's put that away. Hmm, neato. Okay, as you can see, I can also uh, attack with one and sneak with the other, with the triggers, if you will. Uh, yeah, so this is the village I decided, the blue village. In my first playthrough, I did the ever everyone's first choice, the green village. And uh, let me show you around. There, there, there are the two places that need to be fought. You'll, you'll see, event you'll eventually see what what we do when we get around there. Let me see if I can hunt this mouse. Okay, am I able to hunt it still? Let's see if I can do it. Nah, it's gone. Yeah, I was gonna show you how hunting works. It seems I failed at that, so... Let's move on to something else. Nope, that didn't work. I tried my best. I definitely need to eat, otherwise I'm gonna lose health. Oh, that frog just ran away. Got it. Thank God for that. Now let's eat. Yum yum. Eat up. Alright, let's see if I can... Oh shit, I'm about to die. I gotta, I gotta exit out. But yeah, you can die in this game. Uh, this is the end. Oh, no. And then you just reload a save and then you're good. So, yeah, never heal. Because if you heal in this game, you give up that position and that, uh, in that territory. And you don't want to do that. You know, we're back where we started. Let me show you some other features of the game. You have, uh, you have hunting, fighting, swimming, and foraging. And you can upgrade those with XP points that you get from killing people, which I failed to do. And you have little active skills that you can work on if you want. I have a few of them. Not a whole lot. I mean, I'm still working on it. You can also uh, change your uh, appearance. I have a little bitty bit of them. I have chocolate bangle and, and black bangle and whatnot. There are codes you can find online that backers have shared that let you uh, change how you look. I also have a, I can also have a pet turtle if I want. Die, turtle, die! Change of plans, people. We're no longer talking about Cross Sneak Plus. Cause turns out I really don't like the game, and I thought I did, but then I played it, 
And the sesh was boring and didn't have much to talk about and I was mostly just shitting on it. So I'm like, fuck that. Instead, Factotum 90 is going in the list. But before we talk about Factotum 90, let's talk about Demon's Tilt. Yep, it's Demon's Tilt. It's a pinball game that isn't just simulated pinball. And it's just one, one uh, board. Let's turn on the sound because obviously I had the sound off before I got done recording. I'm gonna stop doing that voice now. Jesus Christ, I gotta turn that down. <laughs> An ardent professional am I. Let's turn that to about like half. Did I mention this game has a bug where the audio mixing doesn't work and if you turn it up too loud, it like clips the audio and goes way too loud? Okay, so as you can see, it's a pixel style game. It's sort of like half vector, half pixel. And it's uh, and it's an occult game, similar again to uh, the Jockey Crush Devils Crush Alien Crush trilogy that I uh, very much love from Nagzat. I think you're going to quickly find out I'm not very good at pinball. So I'm not exactly the best person to give a review on this, but I'll try my best. <laughs> I proved my point just there. But yeah, um, this this game is, is definitely more uh, balanced for uh, people who like doing ball juggling and sort of... Uh, Doing little tricks and whatnot, not exactly for the casuals, in my opinion. This is just on normal. Um, I certainly think it, gravity-wise, it tends to fall towards the bottom more than it really should. I mean, maybe that's like a real pinball machine, but I don't exactly know if the physics are right on this one. I'm gonna intentionally let that fall so I can go back to the middle tier. Um, yeah, the music is great. Uh, it reminds me very much of Genesis soundtracks, but a lot more of like the good side of Genesis as opposed to the, the sound font that kind of ruined it in the latter half of its lifespan. Uh, right now there's not much going on, but trust me, shit gets wild if you let it. Which, who knows if I'll be able to do that. It's just the luck of the draw, truth be told. Even though pinball is technically not gambling, as I lose, but yeah, uh, Pinball is technically not gambling because it was ruled upon by the U.S. Senate because of a demonstration done by a legendary pinball dude. But I'm not an expert on that, so I'll just leave it at that. Oh, cool. Different music. That's nice. I've never heard that before. We're learning things today. So, yeah, I'm going to keep juggling the same thing over and over again because I suck. Oh, wait, right, you can tilt. should probably be doing that more. You tilt with the analog stick and there's a tilt meter that builds up that prevents you from spamming it too much. I'd never overflowed it, so I don't know what happens, but I'm not about to find out. Right now, uh, we're in the early phases of the game, as you can clearly tell, because I am not doing that well. Because, like I said before, I suck at pinball. That was one of the things that plagued the, the last recording, as I kept saying, as you can tell. I'll try to keep that to a minimum, I swear. But yeah, right now it's just uh, it's just your average game of pinball. Not much to really say. There's not too much that stands out, except for obviously the enemies. But I feel like you could do that in a real pinball machine if you tried hard enough. You could do like little uh, moving parts that prevent you from uh, going forward. Although nowhere near as detailed. But I mean, I know about as much as, about pinball as I do about rocket science. So I mean, I should probably keep my mouth shut. Finally, I awakened her. So that should help out immensely with my score. I'm hoping to get a bonus room so I can show you what that's like. That would be ideal. Because if I get a bonus room, then I can really show off the wackiness of this game. There's a lot of rituals that start, like one that just happened. Rituals are sort of like the goals of the game, and they're sort of uh, little challenges to see how far you can get and how much you can score. Like, I just completed a ritual right there, and that earned me a letter, I believe. If you get letters, you get, like, massive bonuses or, like, certain modes activated, like multi-ball or whatever. It's all about, like, micromanaging all that and trying to get the best score. Because this is mainly a score-based game, as most pinball games are. Although, I think there's a little bit of plot advancement, for sure, but it's definitely surface level. So I'm going to try to focus and try to get a really good score for you all. I guess not. It's definitely not my best score. It's kind of a weak score, should be told. But I could have done worse. I could have done worse. As you can see, 
My best score is 50 million. That was a really lucky run that I got. Hi guys, I'm back with Factotum 90. This time, I jumped straight into the game. I don't want to deal with the menu faffing about anymore. So basically, uh, to just sum up why I'm choosing this game, it did have a physical release. It was through limited run. It was a PS Vita game, as I will show on screen, but it has never been released physically for Switch, which is why I want it on Switch, and I definitely don't want it through limited run. I don't know how, how quiet or loud this sound is because I purposely decided to turn it off because I oftentimes get distracted and just don't exactly talk the best when I have the sound on for this particular game. I've recorded it several times, and uh, hence why this is actually uh, nine days later from the last recording. A lot of stuff happened in my life. I'm not going to get into it at all. Basically, it's just a lot of crap that is very hard to deal with, but I've been I've been working it out. You know, don't worry about me. I'm a-okay. I can deal with whatever comes in front of me. I just got to persevere, and I got to get through this part of the video. I really do. So uh, it's really hard to talk and do a puzzle at the same time. The guy in game is going to describe it, and I'm going to talk over him. I know it's not exactly ideal, but I'm going to try my best to get this in my first try. I might mess up and have to do it more than once. I should just get the freaking thing done. So let's get the freaking thing done. Uh, as you can tell, it sort of has a uh, VHS aesthetic. It has sort of like a CR, not a CRT, like a, like a, a bit of a CRT, but it's like you're v viewing a security cam from two different robots. Basically, this guy is like trapped somewhere and they need like electricity and like help stuff. Some boring ass story. And basically his low poly ass needs your help with these little low poly robots. So what he wants me to do first is he wants me to press A on this thing. It's gonna take a long ass time to explain it. That's what he wants me to do. He wants me to press A and I just did that. Uh, so the first thing uh, I, I need to do with this guy, I believe it's this button. Yes, it is indeed this button. So I'm going to press X, which is kind of confusing because Y is grab and X is the button to uh, start uh, to the other robot. But um, it's it's very confusing because X and Y are right next to each other and I am used to playing uh, Sony games or um, Xbox games and all of them are different, which is really annoying. And not to mention I'm playing with a GameCube style controller, which makes it even more confusing. I don't have to do that to myself, I just do because that's the way I roll. I usually take the road least traveled and completely impractical, so it's like way harder. Uh, yeah, that's just generally how I do things. So I'm gonna press the uh, Y button. I literally have to look down because it's just so confusing, you know, to my uh, peon brain. So basically what I have to do and what I failed to do in my last recording is, is uh, drop this on, down on here and get the, oh, okay. <laughs> I flipped it over. Uh, get the second box. And from there, I have to drop it on a particular uh, button. So what I'm going to do first is I'm, is I'm going to uh, drop it down. And I'm going to get the other guy to go where he needs to go. Now, I believe if I'm not mistaken. And by the way, if I mess this part up, it's not that big of a deal. I can actually redo this part. It's one of the few parts I can redo. So uh, I'm going to, be I believe it's this button I have to uh, press to get him to, uh... there we go. <laughs> Got it first try, baby, let's go. And I pressed the grab button immediately after. Like I said, confusing. And basically you just uh, get your guy, your little robot dude over here and try to get him on the same level as you, uh, scrub. I did it again. So apparently I'm the scrub. And from here, he is now on the platform that he is able to uh, move upward if I uh, put the other thing on the right button. And this is very crucial. So let me be silent for a second, check. Yeah, boy, let's go. So I'm going to now press the X button. I have to tell myself to do this. And that's basically the puzzle solved. As you can see, there's these little collectibles. I don't really care. But yeah, you just drop your little robots here. And that's your typical level in fact, totem 20. Or sorry, did I say 20? I meant 90. There's also like beams in the game, like energy beams. And I decided just to show one level because I don't want to, I don't really want to spoil it too much because it is a puzzle game and you want to do the least amount of spoiling in puzzle games in general. So I decided just, just to give a freebie when it comes to solutions. So I think that's about it. And actually, you know what? I'm kind of proud of myself. I got through it. All I had to do was turn the freaking sound off because it was distracting and it overwhelmed me. Let's hope nothing fricked up and we will be golden let's freaking a go sup guys it's uh let's wait for it 
That's what it is. It's Fast RMX by Shannon Multimedia. Yet again, the same company as uh, the Art of Balance people. And uh, yes, I'm going to be playing this game to demonstrate why I think it should have a physical. Uh, in fact, believe it or not, there are three Shannon Multimedia um, games on this uh, on this list. It's not a very diverse list, as you can tell. But I don't care because I think Shannon Multimedia is underrated as frick, dude. And this is a F Zero clone. And just so you know, I'm going to be absolutely terrible. Um, um, the main gimmick of this game is sort of like an Ikaruda style gimmick where you have black and white things you can switch between or I guess orange and blue in this case and uh, basically um, you just gather up enough things and uh, try to place fast enough and um, it's actually a trilogy believe it or not um, it was originally uh, fast racing league on WiiWare and then uh, the next one was fast racing Neo on the Wii U and now it's Fast Racing RMX. Or I guess just Fast RMX, because it got rid of the racing part. Yeah, um, it's it's basically just an enhanced port of Fast Racing Neo, whereas the original game, uh, Fast Racing League, doesn't resemble anything like this. But yeah, um, this game is fucking intense, as you can tell. It's very much inspired by something like F-Zero GX, for sure. But god, these graphics are pretty, aren't they? But I'm placing pretty decent. Honestly, I'm not doing that bad. I was expecting I would do worse. That's how that shape works, baby. Yes, I'm pulling uh, Group X and saying shape. Hey, I got third place, and I wasn't even really paying attention. So yeah, um, that was a nice little diversion. I'm using the lean. Doesn't really seem to help much. In general, um, this is freaking tough but awesome am i in baby mode like why the hell am i already in fifth i do not deserve to be in fifth i'm playing like trash does this have like reverse rubber banding my brazen strategy of just being an idiot and not paying attention seems to be working funny how that works and look how far ahead i am now jesus christ i guess is there no rubber banding there might not be I just got first place. How? How did I get first place? That is insane to me. This one's going to be rough. I can already tell. Oh. <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah, this one's not going to be fun. Woohoo! Well, I bleed every minute. I know, I know he's saying when I play, but it sounds like he's saying when I bleed. Whoa. Whoa there, buddy. Oops, I die. Oh, I really sucked this round. No, I can't restart. Okay, so I'm stuck. I'm stuck with where I'm at. Dang, dude, that stinks. I always thought that was cheap anyway, if like, you're in the middle of like a relay. And they're just like, oh, you can just restart at any, at any checkpoint you want. I'm like, that's kind of cheap. There really is no rubber banding, is there? Oh, shit. Oh, my alarm's going off. That's wonderful. Oh, I got third! Wow, really? After that shit performance, I got third? That's incredible. That's not that bad. Wow, we dude! It's Gunman Clive and Gunman Clive 2. Yes, Clive. A very, uh, not so common name now, but back in the cowboy days, Clive was a very common name for a cowboy. It's by uh, Bertel Horberg, and uh, the music's by uh, Anne, or Arn Horberg. I thought it said Anne. Yes, this originally came out on the 3DS. It was a bit of a uh, later 3DS release, or maybe mid, depending on how you look at it, because the 3DS lasted way too long after the uh, Switch came out. This is a collection of Gunman Clive and Gunman Clive 2. So I think this would be the perfect way to put this on physical, considering, you know, this game has never, ever been physical. And there's some differences between each version to the point where I think one solid definitive edition that could be preserved on cartridge would be ideal. So uh, I'm going to start with Gunman Clive, and then I'll and I'll play a little bit of that. Uh, let's let's play the first one as uh, Miss Johnson, and the other game I'll play as Gunman Clive. Let's go uh, let's go easy, cause I'm a babby. Help! 
help get it haha <laughs> he's he's the uh damsel in distress in this case okay so in this game you jump and shoot it's uh it's like a Mega Man clone ow shit i just got hurt Un unlike Mega Man, you don't die in one hit you actually have a health bar and there's ducks you gotta kill the ducks yeah animal cruelty be warned who gives a shit we're already like 30 minutes into the video who cares God, I suck so bad, and I'm playing on easy. That's Let's Play Syndrome at its finest. Talking and uh, playing is very hard, as you can uh, see by my shit playing. Well, at least I got him. And I got a cake, so the game is rewarding me for my bad play. So let's see if I can get past this first level. Oops. Shit. Oh, I cleared the stage in, in terrible time, too. Yeah, so, uh, the rest of this recording was kinda shit. So instead, we're going to do a death compilation, cause that's lol te funny. Cue the music! It's me, Matt McMahon here. I'm here to talk about Moon Raider. Sound awful. Jesus Christ. Yes, it's uh, Moon Mommy. Yes, I know that makes no sense, but assuming she's 18, I would smash. Who knows? She's an alien, so you know her age could be off. Who knows? I have no idea. Basically, she's buff. She's hot. And, uh, yes, what am I talking about? Oh, you're right, Moon Raider. Yeah, I think it's an underrated gem on the Switch. I think, despite being published by a generally trash company, Dragius Games, or whatever the hell they're called, I think this game does deserve a physical, and it should probably be published by somebody else, because it's way too high tier compared to the rest. I don't give a shit about the plot, but you're just some alien girl smashing robots and whatnot. So let's jump right into the news. So this, uh, B button is shooty. Shoot the bang bang, which by the way, um, I'm using the uh, fight stick. This is the button you go like, wee, with your like little powers. Like this, wee. The graphics are very nice. I really do like them. God damn it! Let's see, what else do I have to say about this game? It's not exactly the easiest game, but it's not that hard either. The thing that makes the game hard is essentially that you have to do it all in one go, basically. That's what really spikes up the difficulty. Uh, these robots are massive fucks. I do not like them. Let's head on back up and get that freaking power gem. Ba bam, ba bam, ba bam. We got ourselves a freaking uh, game going. Kill that motherfuck. Oh shit. Be careful uh, not to touch the uh, laser or else you die. And dying is not good in this game because you have to go all the way back to the start of the level. Yeah, bitch, you, that's what you fucking get. Okay, don't, don't go into the spike. That's the last thing you want to do. Okay, first and foremost, I need... Ah! Gosh dang, dude. Yeah, um, I think this is a long enough game and a good enough game that uh, I can I can see myself buying this on cartridge. Th this would probably be a limited release, but, I, you know, you can, you can always hope that it wouldn't be. But realistically, it probably will be. If it were to be released physically, maybe it'd be super rare. I'm okay with those guys. That that wouldn't be so bad if it was a super rare game, which I think would be likely given you know super rare's track record. I mean, I definitely would not like it to be strictly limited. Those guys fuck me over. Okay, so what is next on this journey of mine? Dying apparently is the next step in my journey. Hi, take three here. It's part-time UFO. So let's uh, let's start with the clothing in the game before we get in the actual gameplay. As you can see, there's many different clothes you can do. I'm wearing the tiger outfit, but I could also wear something like uh, this UFO outfit, which makes me move really quick. Don't let heavy stuff weigh you down. That's a good one too. Let's stick with that one for now. There's feats of glory, which are like achievements. I've unlocked one of the uh, little frames that you get from getting 
completing all four of the achievements. And as you can see, I'm very close with some other ones. Now I'm going to be trying to beat a level, but keep in mind, I might not be able to. I'm not doing Toy Shop 2, because that one is insanely hard. Let's do Circus 1. Uh, what an elephant, he can carry eight animals, like it's nothing. Uh, yes, uh, there's scared little turtles, and there's uh, spooked little dogs, as well as uh, a turtle with a top hat. And uh, let's see, what else? There's uh what the hell, what the fuck is that? Is that a snake? Oh God, that's a, that's hard as fuck, holy shit. Let's see if we can, ba-bam. That worked out just fine, let's see. And then we have a giant ass chicken. Can we fit him, in? yeah, we can fit him right there, okay. And then there's a sea urchin, just a wee little sea urchin. And then there's uh, a donkey. A video game donkey. Holy shit, this is way harder than the other one. Oh my god. The other one was kind of a cakewalk in comparison. No! <laughs> well, that went poorly. <laughs> oh my god, that went so poorly. That was hilarious. Let's see if we can do that again. Uh, but actually, don't do that again. We're going to try to do the, the right thing and make sure these animals don't die. No! <laughs> We're gonna try to freaking put these animals right where they belong. In the trash! No, just kidding. On this little elephant, dude. I, I wonder when the giant chicken's coming in, because that's gonna be the real indicator of, of if I can, can continue my streak of luck. Let's see. I'm gonna place this little guy right about here. The funk soul brother. Okay, that seems to be good. Let's place the giant chicken right about here. Okay, and then we gotta place the last guy on the other side, and I think we should be good. Let's see if we can place him right about here. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. No! Dang, I was so close. Jesus Christ. We can do this. I know we can. Uh, place him right about here. No, 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 no. Dang it. Okay, shit. He's really hard to balance, isn't he? No! Dang, I suck at this. Holy shit. Come on, snake. Come on, snake. No, snake. God damn it. Shit. God, this is so freaking hard. You have no idea how hard this is. See, it's hard, it's hard to really tell how, how the game plays unless you actually, like, control it yourself. This may seem easy, but trust me, it is not easy. Oh, man, I got the donkey right away. God dang, donkey. Are you serious? Can I, can I put him on top of the dog? I know that sounds... Nope, didn't work. Okay, the chicken goes about here, and let's see if we can place the sea urchin on top. And we should be good. And bada bing, bada boom, skis. No! Damn it! Okay, that's gonna be the end of that, because I can't bear to lose any more like that. Let's try something else. Let's try, uh, let's try the museum too. Let's see if that will do any better. Oh my god, that was so emotionally heart-wrenching. You have no idea how that feels, dude. You have no idea how that feels. How am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to go like that? What the fuck? Oh, that actually works. What the fuck? That's insane. We're just gonna go somewhere else for now. Let's see. Okay, and then we need the other guy. Where the fuck did the art person go? Well, that's okay. I don't really care about getting all three of them. Honestly, I, I just want to freaking beat this. Ah, dang it. Son of a gun. Let's try this again. So, put, put the little turd on there. Okay, I guess it's done. Oh okay, yeah, let's see what rating I get. I probably get none of them. Okay, so I got two of them. Not bad, not bad. Okay, next up is a double pack of Skelly Celeste plus Stramium Immortally. And I want to give a shout out to the dev though because he has a few other games that I think if they were on Switch I would like them to be bundled in. Two of those games are Spirits Abyss which is a really really good game and I'm surprised it's not on Switch yet for, for whatever reason it isn't. It's a clone of um Spelunky and a bit of Binding of Isaac mechanics and I really like it. And the other one is uh, Bone Razor Minions. This one's still in early access so I, I don't expect it to be on Switch anytime soon but it also seems to be a really cool game. 
based on what I played. And another shout out to his upcoming game, Dead Zoned A Credits Bounty. That game also looks super cool. You can play a demo on Steam. All this stuff, I hope one day will come out for Switch. Um, it's made by a dev named Caseware, but it's not spelled traditionally. The guy's name is kind of like Caius, I guess, but I'm pretty sure it's Case because the guy's last name is Case. His name's Anthony. So yeah, all those games I would really like to be in one specific package. But for now, if I were to ask for a physical, I'd want it to be Scully Celeste and Stramium Immortally. So let's start with the better game, in my opinion. So this game actually has like an, a Halloween theme, which should activate sometime in October. It, it is currently the 29th of uh, September when I'm recording this, which by the time you, you see this, it might very well be close to Halloween. I have no idea. Uh, let's start with Dungeon Pilgrimage. Oh, you motherfuck. It's, uh, it's, it's the last one. It's funny how that works. The game has like dumb writing like this, where like everything's written like as if it's written by a crazy person. Okay, let's see if I can dodge the boss's attacks. Oh, no, I didn't. I died. Very dark in here. It's hard to really see. Oh, crap. Jesus Christ. I'm not, I, every time I talk, I seemingly get hurt. There's no way I'm making past this boss. I, I just have a good feeling I won't. Oh, no, apparently I did. I made it past the boss. Hearts. Yay. Good job, me. Oh, another boss. Jesus. So this seems more to be like a, like a, like a boss rush, but like enemy rush, I guess. Like a horde mode, if you will, like from Halo, if that makes any sense. Jesus Christ. Like, I have no idea how, how, how Let's Players do this sort of shit. Like talking and like doing shit like this. It's nearly impossible, I swear. What the fuck happened there? So Clashful Cards is the is, is the card game that uh, the creator uh, Anthony Case made up for this this game and other games as well. And, he, and he's tweaked it every single release he's had. Let's see. I'm gonna do. I see his strategy. I wonder what my strategy should be. Okie doke. Oh, look at that, baby. Let's freaking go. Okay, I think I should win if I play my cards right. Literally. <laughs> I won! Okie doke. Looks like we're in the galaxy. So this is sort of like a, like a dungeon crawler sort of game mixed with like Binding of Isaac, I guess. Shit, and I died, so... This game's kind of changed since, since I last played it, you know? I, I feel like it totally has. Die. Die. It's kind of like an old PC game, in my opinion. And just like an old PC game, I suck at it. Yay, hearts. Let's go right about here. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. And I'm dead. So reload, save. Let's try it again. More, more shit to do, apparently. There's a lot of levels. Holy shit. I mean, that's a lot of freaking places to go. This game is pretty expansive as opposed to the last game. Oh shit, I died like instantly, like turbo instantly. Hey guys, I'm in SteamWorld Dig, A Fistful of Dirt. It's a really, really good game. And right now I'm in the tutorial level. I've just uh, unlocked the pickaxe. And then let me say before I go any further, this game actually was a uh, limited uh, release, but it was through Super Rare, and uh, you can't really get any more because there's a really early release from Super Rare, meaning that it's super hard to find now. I really wanted to have a, a main physical, you know, widespread, but that seems to not be possible right now. But that's kind of bullshit in my opinion, because this game is freaking awesome. I really like it. It's a really, really good game. It's a sort of a roguelike mining simulator. It's got like, you know, some levels of combat, but mostly it's just mining. I'm sure many people, many of you have played SteamWorld Dig, so I, w I won't bore you with too many details, but basically this game is just freaking awesome. It really is. And basically the goal is to just make it down below and try to, uh, I think it's try to find your uncle, I believe. Because you, you think he's dead, but it's possible that he might not be. You never know. There's also a sequel to this game that I have played and beat, although uh, I have not played it on Switch. I have no idea if it got a physical on Switch either. I'll be sure to tell you somewhere on the screen right now if the sequel got a physical. The uh, game itself has great music, great graphics, and has great sound. It's just a fantastic game. I've beaten this game countless 
numerous times. And the reason why I like this game more than even like the sequel is because it's just procedurally generated and it's infinitely replayable. Now right now I'm in the dark, but don't you worry your pretty little head. We will make it back to the surface and I will show you what is up. And we are on the surface and we've just reclaimed our light because we have a solar panel on ourselves that generates light for our lantern. Blah, 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 don't give a shit. She's basically just telling us, you find ore, you can uh, redeem it, and I'll show you how that goes. So we go like, bam, bam, bam. And we just keep trying to find ore and redeem it for money so we can progress the game and get all the uh, upgrades in the game. And right now, all we're finding is Trashium. That's no big deal because Trashium is worth quite a lot in the beginning stages of the game. But eventually, we will find stuff that is beyond just Trashium. This is an enemy. Now, I'll try to freaking defeat him. I just did. But normally they pr provide kind of a nuisance if you don't know what you're doing. Okay. It says sell loot. I'm, I'm going to try to find a little bit more. Okay, and now we're good. Now let's freaking go and redeem our prize. You got to be careful when mining these uh, spaces because you can't. There's, it's possible you can accidentally screw yourself over and not be able to get back up. In that case, you'll have to use some of your ladders. Hmm, now I'm kind of stuck, aren't I? Jesus Christ, I didn't think about that. Then I got stuck for like 12 minutes, despite the fact I warned the audience, that being you earlier, that uh, you shouldn't do that, but I'm a big stupid idiot, and I did it, and yeah, pretty fucking stupid, aren't I? I went ahead and sped up the footage by like 2,000% so you wouldn't get bored. Anyway, I think we're about done here now. A teleporter! Hell yeah, let's go baby, let's freaking go. Somehow I survived. Teleporter! I made it back! Whoop whoop! I crushed that new goal. Yeah, boy, let's go. What's up, guys? It's Live Action Matt here, here to report on some pew, 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 pew. breaking news. I, in fact, did buy a physical Switch game recently, as well as replaced the Hades case. Let me show that off. Bada bing, bada boom skis. As you can see, I've organized my Switch games in this nice little container right here. I have two more just like it. If we look right here, we have the game in question that I uh, physically bought. It's Astria Ascending. I also did some recategorizing. Uh, a Magical High School Girl is now with the M's. So the first game in, in, on the uh, shelf is Akiba's Trip. This game is uh, similar to a Final Fantasy game made by a lot of the same people. Kind of reminiscent of 12 in art style, as well as sort of like a vanilla wire, but massively tweened and kind of wiggly and budgetly uh, low if you know what i'm saying not exactly the highest uh, quality animation but i do like it i do like the way it looks the art is very nice uh the graphics are great in my opinion the gameplay is uh pretty cool i haven't played that much of it but it's a nice turn-based rpg system and i like the card game that's associated with it i think it's really cool anyway so that's astria ascending and for hades let's show you uh what the actual case normally looks like now, the interesting thing about this is that hades actually did come with the code for the band cam and believe it or not the code actually did work i used it i got a free soundtrack with with the case that i bought let's show the manual right here manual squad hype and it's a nice little art book sort of thing and uh yeah everything's complete it has the uh, little backing right here and uh I, I still have the old case let me see if i can find that here's the old case right here as you can tell i'm not as nice as this spanking brand new new case that is freaking hype hi guys i'm back with thumper Yes, it's a very hard game, Thumper is. I've not been looking forward uh, to playing this on recording. It's been very worrying to me because I suck at this game. But I'm going to be trying my hardest to play the game and show you what it's all about. This game did get a physical. It was through Limited Run, those greedy bastards. It was number nine on Switch. Uh, it was uh, limited release number nine, which means th that was a long time ago because they're in the hundreds now. So you, you definitely w will have a hard time trying to find this physically. But I think it should get another chance to be played by the masses, in my humble opinion. So uh, enough dilly-dallying, let's freaking play the game. Take three, everybody. I had a major controller problem, so I'm gonna try this again. There we go. Now I got it. Now everything's working out, so let's try to beat this level. 
There we fucking go. That's what I'm talking about. S rank. Yes, perfect so far. That should be another S. Let's go, baby. Aw, oh, shit. Oh, shit, and I died. There you fucking go. I'm gonna try to go for perfection, people. That's how crazy I am. Graphics are beautiful, by the way. It looks basically the same as it does on all the other consoles. Oh my god, did I really just restart from the beginning? I think I did. I can't believe I'm doing this with a delay. So far, so perfect. I'm not gonna beat this whole freaking stage. That would be near impossible. God, this feels great with headphones on. Then A rank? Yeah, boy. It's gotta be S. Yes! Doesn't look freaking great on Switch, just besides the filter. I think it's because everything's just so low poly. The music is also freaking creepy and cool. And it goes so well with the game. I freaking pressed it. I don't know if you can hear it on my microphone, but I pressed the button. That is a load of horseshit if I ever heard it. That'll have to do. Even though it's not exactly the best turn, that's still an A rank. God, I love that little sound that it makes. Mmm. But bam Nailed that shit, baby. Let's go. Aw, oh, frick, I died, dude. I'm gonna do it one more time just because I was really close that time. Okay, that, that's it. We're done here. No more. Quit. Quit, quit, quit. Hey guys, what's up? I'm back again. I need to stop saying that. I say that pretty much every single time. But uh, yeah, I'm back with the tourist. And just a heads up, uh, I switched out um, Tori 3D and Tori 2 with uh, a game that will come up after uh, the next game, which will be Wife uh, Quest. And that new game will be War Room and as well as Isolamus, as opposed to those two games I mentioned before, Tori 3D and Tori 2. So I thought I'd just let you know that ahead of time. I know this video has been sporadic but I've kind of been going on the fly and just going with the flow so yes I'm here in the tourist but with a Y it's a very beautiful game it's completely voxel based has anti-aliasing has uh, tweening and all this stuff it also has depth of field it has uh, motion blur it has uh, you know all sorts of stuff that make up for it I'm usually not a big fan of that sort of stuff but I really enjoy it so I'm on the second island of the game Ibiza I pretty much got the tutorial and all the uh, extraneous stuff in the beginning just to, not to bore you with all that so right now we're with a party so uh the goal is to uh make the party more exciting as of now not everybody is too happy with me i don't know why but i'll i'll figure it out see if we can make more party go on so let's turn on a light a little bit more party yeah now we're starting to party hard andrew wk style see if we can party even harder let's see if we can party till we puke they're not partying enough, god damn it. Let's talk to the smoothie guy, because it seems like I can't get the party rockin' tonight. So let's see if I can talk to him. We're out of fruits. I can help. Please read my smoothie recipe and get all the fruits that I need. Looks like I need a, a strawberry and some melons. What they really need is they, they need, need some, some milk. milk. That's the real party drug. Haha, <laughs> toilet humor. Oh, I got a coin. Sweet. Let's see. Can we find the le fruit? I'm not finding any left fruit so far. Yeah, I mean, it's not like there's like two fruit like right fucking there or something. So yes, this game is sort of an exploratory as well as a kind of um, uh, adventure a platformer sort of thing. It's its own style of game. I mean, I think that's pretty obvious given what we're doing right now. So I'm going to pull out the camera and let's see if I can take a sick ass picture. Yeah, looks like I gotta zoom out a little bit more so I can get that sick selfie. Not quite. Let's see if I can get a different angle. Yeah, boy! I got a picture. So now I can redeem that for some cash. Money, money, money. Look at Melon. We found it. Let me just click on it. Oh, oh I remember what I gotta do. I gotta plug this in. Yeah, max party, let's go. When it's time to party, we will always party hard. Party hard, party hard, party hard, party hard. Delicious smoothie. Now we're in the puzzle portion of the game. Oh, 
Yeah! Screw you, snake -a -roni. You go suck my wee-wee. Give me those coins. Yum, yum, yum. Eat them up. Eat them up. This is the part where I failed the puzzle like 10,000 times, so I cut that out. Otherwise, we'd be here all day. You wouldn't want that, would you? Back to your regularly scheduled programs. What the fuck? I made it! Frick! Oh my god! Hi guys, I'm here with Wife Quest. Yes, indeed, it's Wife Quest. Uh, it's a uh, East Asia soft game. It's uh, actually got a physical for PS4 and nothing else through uh, Play Asia. Um, although there are limited releases, like limited edition releases, and uh, there is no regular versions of each, and there's no version for Switch at all. So I would like to see that be a reality. It's a sort of hack and slash, sort of pixel MMO style. Um, game but the twist is watch this you freaking humiliate and rip apart your enemies in a cute and sort of uh, moe way hence the title wife quest because you make them your wife you know it's not very expensive on the eShop, and in general there's not much to it but i like the visuals i like the music i think i think it's worthy enough of some sort of release on switch i mean would i buy it i mean that's the thing about most of these i don't really know if i'd buy them i just think they should be available for everybody else which i know sounds super weird when i say it like that but i don't really exactly care i mean i, I just think you know there's certain things that need to be preserved in some capacity now i know emulation exists but i mean i i just think it'd be nice for people to be able to you know spend their money on something where they don't need to worry about ha having to have all the storage space to install all the games that they want like i have a lot of games installed in my switch and uh, i normally wouldn't if it wasn't for the fact that i have so many cartridges you know like otherwise you know i'd have to freaking uh buy bigger storage which i know sounds ridiculous like why not just buy bigger storage but there's also the case that sometimes physicals end up being cheaper than the actual game itself this one certainly wouldn't be the case though because this is normally like five dollars on sale so i would not really bother freaking paying you know a fit for a physical of it unless you like really wanted a limited edition which i think should should be the option you know considering there's an option for ps4 and nothing else i'm saying all this as i'm sucking super hard at the game like oh my god i'm sucking so hard i'm trying my damnedest though i really am the main problem with this game is that there is no like there is no hit stun you basically as soon as you get hit if you get if you get close to an enemy again you will die or you will get another hit and eventually you will die i mean you say just off has put out way crappier games on switch than this so i say why the hell not you know that's that's just my take on it if this is on apple arcade would you buy Apple Arcade for it. I don't think so, but you would you would play it if, it if it was alongside some of the other games you wanted. I typically don't like Apple Arcade because Apple Arcade uh, is very exclusionary to the uh, Android platform, which I think is better for preserving games, as well as the fact that some games can't even get like PC or console releases until they go through their exclusive, exclusive period uh, on uh, Apple Arcade, like freaking Exit the Gungeon sequel, Enter the Gungeon, or Shantae and the Seven Sirens, and maybe even games that weren't intended to be mobile will kind of get dragged down by the fact that they're Apple Arcade exclusives and they get ported somewhere else and they're just mobile boards. There's not like a whole lot of color. I would like to see more color variety in the game, like a better color palette. Maybe if they ever make a sequel, maybe they can do that. I don't know. I mean, platforming this game isn't exactly the best. Hit collision isn't exactly the best. You know, things kind of feel just out of reach don't necessarily feel fair. So yeah, this is uh, budget. Budget and a bit of a uh, bit of a jank game. There's a boss I'm stuck on in this game, so it's like the first boss of the game. I'm kind of embarrassed by it, the fact that I can't beat her. I'm sure if I was more patient, I could, but I don't know. I just get so impatient with these bosses. I hate bosses that where you just have to be constantly dodging and, you know, trying to navigate their attacks. You can barely hit them. I like, I like bosses where, you know, not necessarily that you have to mindlessly mash, but bosses where you have to use some sort of clever solution as opposed to just wait out an attack pattern and wail on them, you know, and just hope you don't get hit. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me sort of like uh, like a GBA game almost, but like higher res and higher sound. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I am so terrible at this game. <laughs> Do not let that be an indicator of how good it actually is because it's not actually that bad. I just make it look like trash because I suck at it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next part.
Hello guys, I'm back for the last time, here with Waroom and Isolamus. But the funny thing about Isolamus and Waroom is, I already played Waroom. I played it on uh, my Steam Summerfest video I made a while back. I'll put the uh, card for that up above and uh so i'm not going to be playing that and i would play isolamus on the switch but i remembered in between recording sessions that uh you can only play these games in handheld mode thankfully for me i have uh some uh freaking uh game going on right here through the desktop let's get straight into it as you can see things are a little bit uh creepy going on here and the game has multiple paths and endings and whatnot it's quite spoopy honestly i should be playing this in the dark i mean oh my god this shit is so disgusting it doesn't really matter what order you go into i'm just gonna do brush teeth i'm going to do uh eat food and then i'm gonna do lappy top that's the general way life works right and then just play with your phone i guess the plasticine work on here is quite incredible, uh, and I love the animation. The animation is quite ridiculous, but also amazing at the same time. So I guess it's time to sleep. Yeah, the sounds are also great in this game, and in general they give off a really spooky vibe. Things are quite bleak in this game. You know, there's not going to be that good of an outcome for the individual in this game. We're just going to let time pass for a little bit. I guess a lot of bit. Set him free, right? You know, that's how life works. At least I would hope so. But nope, he gets absorbed, because life is grim. Yeah, I mean, I think if you were to combine both these games and maybe put a third game by this creator on here, I think that'd be a nice little Switch package. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to quit the game. And uh, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I know this wasn't exactly the best ending to end on. You know, I don't really care. <laughs> See you, Montmondo, I guess.